Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video. Uh, many of you have been asking me about the Erasmus Mundus program. And today I have with me Kapil. He messaged me on my email that he wants to share his experience of studying and living in all over Europe because what he's doing now, as I heard from him, is the Erasmus Mundus program. We'll talk in details about that here. And because of that, he's already traveled over like Italy, France, Germany, and his master's is spanning over two or three European countries. So this will be a very interesting video for all of you who are applying from India. How can you apply for Erasmus Mundus program? And first, we'll start with a very brief question. Like first, we'll introduce Kapil and then we'll move ahead with the video. So thank you, Kapil, for joining joining us. Uh, could you please give a brief uh, introduction about yourself and your background of study in India? First of all, thank you, Samit, for uh, I mean uh, for letting me join you in your show, and it is so nice of you that uh, you allowed me doing that. So my name is Kapil Thapliyal, and I'm from Uttarakhand, and I did my class twelfth in 2013, 2014, and it was a science. Uh, uh, class 12th I, I took science courses in my 12th and uh, in the same uh, in the same universe in the same school it was uh, in the Hedon Army Public School and I was very good in studies and both in my 10th and 12th uh, my score was above 95 percent in CBSE and basically I wanted to pursue in research so what I thought is I should go to some research institutions or or any other which is related to research so now in, in India we don't have a lot of research institutions right from the class 12th right so actually i thought it's good to go in delhi university which gives you opportunities to study honors courses where you can just specify or where you can just specifically study one full-fledged subject so i started studying mathematics in delhi university i took maths honors and after doing that i tried to apply in most of the Indian universities and master's program where I got admissions and in most of the Indian universities as well. But in the end of that procedure, while applying, I had an uh, interview call at IIT Bombay as well. And in that interview call, I went to IIT Bombay, but I was rejected. So at that point, it, the there was a thought in my mind that, okay, I didn't clear the best institution in India, IIT, which is IIT Bombay. So somewhere in my mind, I had the feeling that, okay, I need to get into an institution which is more highly, more ranked, better ranked than IIT Bombay. So after that, I started applying to other master's programs in whole Europe, in which I got success. So I got an opportunity to study in whole Europe and basically in three countries. It's an Erasmus Mundus program. And yeah, so that's how my journey started. Okay. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so before moving ahead to your experience of the Erasmus Mundus program, uh, could you please tell briefly, like, because your bachelor's profile is very important when you apply for study abroad. So people are curious always, like, what was your CGPA and uh, what, like, how was your profile like before you came for the program here? So before I came to the program, I had just good academia till class 12th. So once I came into my bachelor's, I did my bachelor's, I did my, my maths honors in Delhi University. There, there my grades were very, very bad. In fact, I had to give improvement exams. So overall, my fi final grade in my whole bachelor's was 69%, which according to German grade is really bad. And also according to whole European standards, it's not very good. But at the same time, since I was good in studies, but not with good, good but not good in grades, so I started applying to research positions in the university. I tried to work on research projects. At the same time, I had a couple of other uh, extracurricular activities as well. So with these key points in my CV, it helped me go through a lot of uh, applications. And in the end, I got the admission in the Erasmus Mundus program where you have a lot of free opportunities. Okay. Okay, so talking about your uh, application and the admits in Erasmus Mundus program, so uh, how much time did you give for your application? Like how uh, we, how many universities did you apply? And uh, what made you choose Erasmus Mundus? Like was there anything specific? And can you also maybe briefly say something like what are the requirements that Erasmus Mundus program expects from a candidate who applies for that? 
So basically, there are generally two ways in students apply. First, students apply directly to the universities. So the whole course curriculum, whole uh, eligibility criteria is set up by university. But in whole Europe, they have these Erasmus Mundus programs, in which is headed by the European Commission kind of thing. So it's it's not offered by a single university actually. So it's it's multiple countries, multiple universities combined by a whole European body. So this this thing makes these kind of programs a little bit special. I applied to some of the German universities, but once I got admission in the Erasmus Mundus program, I forgot about all those and I just started. I thought, okay, let me join this because there are a lot of opportunities. Plus you, you get to travel more than one country. And of course the, the competition is better, more than the normal application to standard universities. And if we talk about the eligibility conditions, again, it depends from which Erasmus Mundus program you're applying for. Because I've heard, I've seen that there are Erasmus Mundus programs for physics as well, maths as well, computer science as well. And there are some specific programs which are only made for researchers. So, I mean, like once you are into the final year of master's, you actually feel very good. You'll start with a PhD just after that. So there are very different kind of Erasmus Mundus programs actually. But the most interesting thing which makes them very popular is that they study, they have to study, you have to study in multiple countries and you get a very good opportunities, a very good exposure. Plus, since it has to be very, generally, these are very subject specific uh, courses. So you have to have certain hold on the subject in which you are applying. In my case, it was maths. So everything what I did in my life is was whole mathematics. So, so I mean, that's why I got the admissions and yeah, that's how it worked for me. And as we discussed earlier, when you applied, you also did not have any uh, work experience as such, right? Before you applied for this program. Yeah, so I did not have any work experience. Generally, in my whole course, uh, I think 70 students were there. And most of them, they, most of them, they did not have any kind of work experience. So basically, the uh, what I see is that they preferred academic students more than the work experience students. Okay. More stronger than academia or, or either the grades are very good, something like mm -hmm. this. So uh, regarding grades, one more thing I would just want to clarify for people who will be curious in India, like uh, in some universities here, like for example, in the Netherlands, I have seen that even if you have a low CGPA, if you have specific grades in specific subjects, which are really needed for the program, if your grade is high in that, then also people really get at in good universities so is it the case in your case also like that some specific subjects grades were very good which were really relevant for the program or it was something else so i'm not sure what made the professors or the evaluators like my profile but what i see when i compare my profile with other profiles all them very bad in grades actually i mean generally students are having 85 percent 90 percent but i'm just below 70 percent as well but what i did was different is that i took part in research uh, projects in the university so when people went in, during during summers most of the students they went home right i was there in delhi I was there in a part of research project, which I tried to head. And then we tried to make a conference out of that paper. And then uh, with the help of other professors, I got a very good recommendation as well, because in the Erasmus program, you have to give two, at least generally, it's generally two uh, recommendations. The senior the professor is, the better the application is actually. So I got very good recommendation from HODs, uh, from different departments and uh, also, when it comes to the subjects which I'm studying, for example, if you're doing honors, so of course your chances of getting a master's degree in the same subject is more because you are completely in depth of that subject. So generally what happens is the first semester you study the same. First two semesters, what you study in master's is, is those subjects which you already have studied in your bachelor's if you are doing honors. So these kind of things help you a lot. And uh, in my case, since I applied to a lot of masters, a lot of universities in India and masters, and I had a pretty decent rank as well. I mean, like I remember uh, for Banaras Hindu University in India, my All India rank was 28 or something like this. And for Jamia Millia Islamia, it was a rank for All India. And something like this, I applied to a lot of universities. Also, it's South Asian universities I applied. And it takes, I think, uh, 10 or 11 students uh, in India, Bangladesh, Nepal, and something. So for India, I was the second or third, something like this. 
so i was not good in grades but i was uh, uh, i was i tried to show as much as skills i had so i think that's that it worked for me yeah well said like um uh, as i understand summarizing what you said like you had a nice set of research skills and also the experience of working in different departments so that helped a lot uh, moving ahead uh, can you tell something like uh, as i see from your linkedin profile that you have a uh, erasmus mundus program which is covering three countries so can you tell briefly like what uh, how is the program the whole program which semester where you stayed and uh, just your experience like about the whole program so uh, since when the uh, program starts starts the name of the program is math mods so you can t- tell that it, it is maths mods right so it's only for math students and it can you can be from engineering students as well because i had some engineering people who are working in isro as well so engineering students were also there from india in that batch but uh, it's it's math mod so you basically you study maths in that maths and engineering stuff but related to maths only so the first semester where you start your studies is l'aquila it's a small city in italy and the first semester you you go in depth in maths it's pure and applied mathematics and once you clear your um, first semester because in erasmus mundus program you have to pass all the exams in the first semester itself it's not like in germany when you go you can take two semester two subjects and leave all the for the next right but here you have if you have five subjects you have to write those exams and clear them in the first semester so if you clear the first semester you go to the next semester next semester is in hamburg which is in germany but since we are already affiliated by the european commission when you go and apply for a visa it just few hours you get in visa like uh, we just go to the embassy we get the german visa in 6 hours or 7 hours and that's it and there you are in germany for the next semester i was there in hamburg i studied in university of hamburg there there i studied optimization and some specific math specific subjects and uh, scientific programming core computing stuff which is in which hamburg is very good actually and then in the end the third semester or the final semester if you say once you complete the second semester in hamburg you go to the third and final semester which is university of nice which is in france so i went there to study mathematical finance so there i got a touch of what is actually finance because before this we never studied finance what we studied was just basic maths or a little bit more in depth optimization that's it so there you get a good uh, taste of finance and all also it's it's uh, in this program what happens is like you you have to choose your specialization in the very beginning of your application so once you are into the program you know where you will land so for example some students will always live, remain in the hamburgs uh, for the second semester and after that also because they chose their specialization which is there in only in hamburg but if your specialization is in uh, spain or something so after even after hamburg you have to go spain so it's it's just uh, you have to when you will be filling forms you will have to uh, give the criteria and what is uh, what preference you want so in my case it was nice in france where i studied finance okay so that means the whole program the whole masters program is for 1.5 years not 2 years right so uh, so the last 6 months or if you want you can extend it is the thesis one okay. so so that is that is completely independent on i uh, mean independent of everything if you want to do that thesis in netherland you just go and apply to the universities or it, it just it's just on you where you want to do but most so of the there is no are... connection between like any host university who needs to agree where you do your thesis or you can choose uh-huh. any and then you talk with someone how does it work like the choosing any university for the thesis and then whom do you connect with for uh, doing it so basically there's a primary connection when you start you know where you'll end up so for example if you are starting you know that your thesis will be in nice or in hamburg but in the middle if you think okay i'm not, i'm i don't want to do thesis in this in this place so you can switch in the end so it just uh, you need another erasmus uh, semester for the thesis but in general 90% of the students they 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 end up in the same i mean they end up in the same semester at the same university of the last term okay 
yeah i mean yeah. that is also convenient right like where you do your third semester you also do your thesis there yeah exactly and in, in my case i came to italy for my thesis ah okay okay so in your case you again come back to italy for the thesis yeah so uh, basically i got a job before i finish my masters so okay. i was like yeah so i mean I, i thought it's better to get some practical experience mm-hmm. i don't know in, in india it's not a very common thing but in europe it's like once you're done with your subjects a lot of students want to get experience the industry experience and that's what i wanted so after getting some industry experience i th- said okay now i will after working for one year i said okay now i'll uh, work on my thesis in the university and i came back to the university i write my master's thesis and i i'm again publishing one paper on that and yeah and after that i'll go back to industry or or another degree okay uh so how did that work out like did you do your that part time job or the job that you are doing in italy was it like in parallel with your studies or did you do the job uh, like you paused your studies for a bit and then you did your job how did you what was your experience so when you're in the course generally in most of the erasmus programs they have some kind of funding so and they have like full funding and half funding kind of thing in most of the erasmus mundus programs so in my case i got the regional grant so by the time you are already studying in the university any semester be it you will be getting some amount of funding be it a regional grant or it be it some kind of erasmus funding so they they will decide and they'll help you out which funding you need or whatever is possible in your case because it it can vary from person to person and country to country and of course financial status as well so in my case when i was studying in the university i was getting funding from the university or sometimes from the regional grant but once i thought i want to switch to industry that funding stops there and once you come back to the university it 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 depends on the case act, actually so after that i did not get any kind of funding so after third semester i started working so by the time i was getting a little bit amount from the university as well and once i started earning myself in the company working in the industry so after that i thought okay let's let's do the masters thesis because i was financially fine after that yeah okay so if you are comfortable can you please share like a range or a brief um uh, like what how much amount did you earn the, while you were working during masters like a brief idea like yes, a yes. salary or something so so the scholarship yeah so if you are getting a full scholarship in erasmus mundus so right now i think in my time it was uh, around 780 something like this but now i think it's 900 euro something it changes year to year due to inflation so generally every month you get 700 something euros that's my, the and for the erasmus mundus right yeah that's that, that's the full scholarship for erasmus mundus but in my case i did not get the full scholarship i was getting a regional scholarship so regional scholarship uh, scholarships amount in general you get around uh, 450 to 500 euros every month and and once you come from italy to germany the mm-hmm. scholarships increases because in germany you have of course more expensive yeah right? and so, also hamburg is more expensive part of germany at least yeah yeah and in italy the rent is like almost one third in what is what's there in germany and so, if i'm not if i'm clear is it only for the living like the amount that you got mm-hmm. uh, you also paid tuition fees right or your study was free and you got some stipend for living so there is no tuition in most of the rest okay of okay, okay so the study is free exactly uh, you have to pay that semester contribution in in germany you have those, yeah yeah uh, that's a very small nominal amount for your uh, yeah. like a student in, pass and tickets and discounts and everything like yeah but in italy you don't have unlimited travels what you have in germany in italy you don't get that but once you okay. get in germany you, know, you you go you 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 are seen as a german student so you get all those benefits of semester tickets but again when you go to france those semester tickets won't work because in france mm-hmm. the rules different yeah but still it is good that because you don't pay so basically you are getting a you can call it like a scholarship that you study for free in so many countries and on top of that you get some uh, like a basic living cost which can vary whether you if you get full or half but still it is good like good enough to to hear that that's a like a good program to apply erasmus mundus program 
Yeah, and and also one thing, like for example, when you come to Hamburg, right? And when you apply for student residence, because the normal private apartments are so expensive, like they are almost two times. So in Hamburg right now, the rent is like 600, 700 euros per one room, right? Yeah, yeah. And when you apply for student and work uh, room, they have mm -hmm. a waiting of 13 months, 18 months. So almost one and a half year of waiting. So basically, if you're going there to for master's, mm -hmm. which is about two years, and if you wait for one and a half year for, for the housing, right? So it's it's destructive for you, right? So once you are in Erasmus Mundus, the, the university makes sure that you have a housing. Okay. Student. So you don't need to apply anywhere. You just go there and you straight away get these student dorms where uh, a lot of students are already waiting for 18 months, mm -hmm. which you get in a few days. But that's these really are, nice because these are small, small programs and chunks in different parts. And if you get additional help for your immigration, like the visa or the housing and the living, then it's really nice like that you have everything at hand. Otherwise, it's difficult for a person to do all these on their own. Exactly. I mean, like we got the visa in 12 hours. Who get, I mean, it's generally in India, right? You, you have to wait three, four months. We got in six yeah. or 12 hours visa yeah. and one day you only in one day you get the student rent in mm -hmm. uh, housing dorms where students are waiting for 18 months so okay. it's a plus and plus yeah and one more thing we missed uh, is like you said that you did a job during the job did you also get an additional like a salary every month or uh, when your grant stopped, you said that my Erasmus uh, monthly grant stopped when I started doing job. So did you get like a monthly salary? What was that? Like approximately how much did you get? So basically in generally, when you apply for Erasmus Mundus, they, you have to sign some contract. And in that contract, you have to, men they have, they mention generally that you can't earn above certain amount of money. Ah, so basically, okay. if you're having scholarship and you're earning, for example, I was earning from my company mm -hmm. online. I was working online. So I was earning around 1200 euros, 1300 euros. But if I get a scholarship of 500 euros, so mm -hmm. my monthly money is around 17 or 1800 euros per month, mm -hmm. which is, which it doesn't make sense for a student, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it, it's more, so, so there, there are some regulations which you have to follow. So either you can work or you 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 can't uh, you can't you won't get a scholarship so that's you have to choose i mean you have to okay. tell uh, according to the rule uh, i mean i'm not sure if people do it or not but yeah, yeah. i understand what you mean yeah okay yeah. okay so i guess you might have got a pretty good idea all of you who are watching the video like how you apply to Erasmus Mundus program from his perspective Kapil's perspective and uh, how you navigate through all these countries and what kind of uh, things you can expect what are the opportunities what are the challenges uh, before ending this video I want to uh speaking about challenges i don't think we discussed that much about any challenges so did you have any particular one or two challenges during the whole 1.5 years of the program which you found something difficult to solve or something which everyone should know before they join such kind of a program yeah so one of the most important thing for you is that you should you should be very well versed about the program because I was not very well versed. I thought it's more of a practical oriented program. But the first three semesters were very hard coded, uh, non-practical subjects. So at some point it is hard. I mean, it's it's hard to clear all the exams where there is very little uh, practical stuff and more, more, of the, more of theory part. And you will see a lot of students uh, who won't make it till the end. So, I mean, that is a part here that you have to make sure. And also uh, moving from one place to another, I mean, not everybody is very comfortable traveling so much and not everybody is fine with, for example, the first semester where we have, the temperature goes to minus 15 straight. And then when in the summers, when we went to Germany, there was like, uh, I mean, the uh, this night, we have this summer timings, right? At 11 o'clock, there was night, right? And you have sun. So these are physical problems. And then when you talk about the academic problems, again, it was mine was very theory based uh, subjects. So these were the few problems. Yeah. So do they give like a, 
brochure where you have a pre like idea before you join the program like what you can expect or there was no such clear demarcation or uh, like outline how the program will shape so basically yeah they have a whole brochure and they have their own website actually but uh, i mean when you write exams so at that point you you you'll be thinking like you know what questions are you expecting are you expecting some practical questions or you were expecting some proofs so i mean uh, it's when you come here right and i was not expecting so many theor theoretic uh, questions so yeah i was surprised but in the end it is fine i mean it's, you get the degree of uh, masters program which is erasmus mundus so it's nice okay so before we started the video we were talking that now kapil is actually uh, he applied to many i think more than 10 german universities uh, for masters uh, after he ends this program because he wants to move to germany to do masters and he already got admit into munich so in the next video we'll be discussing in details like because many of you ask me like with a low cgpa like less than 8 or 7.5 can we really get into germany so it will be interesting to know um how he applied for these german universities and obviously his erasmus mundus program might have already helped but we'll cover all these things in the next video so do watch the next video if you want to know about it um till the next video goodbye from germany and see you. Peace.